Hi, welcome. Let us discuss unit number four, that is chemical kinetics of second PVC chemistry. There will be total eight marks from this chapter for the main exam, and there will be three questions in the question paper. The question number four from this chapter carries one mark. The question number thirteen from this chapter carries two marks, and question number thirty from this chapter carries five marks. chemical kinetics is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of reaction rates and their mechanisms kinetic studies help us to determine the speed or rate of a chemical reaction to describe the conditions by which the reaction rates can be altered the factors affecting the rate of a reaction are concentration temperature pressure and catalyst the different types of chemical reactions fast reactions example is precipitation of silver chloride moderate speed reactions and inversion of cane sugar and hydrolysis of starch very slow reactions example is rusting of iron in the presence of air and moisture rate or velocity or speed of a chemical reaction the speed of a chemical reaction can be defined as the change in concentration of a reactant or product in unit time unit of a rate of a reaction is concentration per time or mole per liter per second or atmosphere per second a rate of a reaction can also be expressed in terms of the rate of decrease in the concentration of any one of the reactants or the rate of increase in the concentration of any one of the products consider a reaction where reactant gives product rate of disappearance of or that is reactant is equal to decrease in the concentration of or divided by time taken which is equal to minus delta concentration of r divided by delta t rate of appearance of product that is p is equal to increase in the concentration of p divided by time taken which is equal to plus delta concentration of p divided by delta t since delta r is a negative quantity because concentration of reactant is decreasing so it should be multiplied by minus 1 to make the rate of a reaction a positive quantity the rate of a reaction measured over long interval of time is called average rate of a reaction average rate depends upon the change in concentration of reactants or products and the time taken for that change to occur the rate of a reaction measured at very small interval of time is called instantaneous rate instantaneous rate is the average rate at the smallest time interval say dt that is when delta t approaches zero instantaneous rate is given by r instant is equal to minus d into concentration of r divided by dt which is equal to d into concentration of p divided by dt for a reaction small a into capital a plus b into b gives c c plus d d where small a b c d are the stoichiometric coefficients capital a and b are the reactants capital c and d are the products rate can be given as rate is equal to minus 1 divided by a delta a divided by delta t which is equal to minus 1 divided by b delta b divided by delta t which is equal to plus 1 by c delta c divided by delta t which is equal to plus 1 divided by d delta d divided by delta t 
for a reaction mercury which is liquid reacts with chlorine which is gas gives mercury chloride which is solid rate for this reaction can be written as rate is equal to minus delta h divided by delta t which is equal to minus delta cl2 divided by delta t which is equal to plus delta h cl2 divided by delta t for the reaction 2 hi which is gas gives h2 which is gas plus i2 which is a gas the rate of this reaction is given by rate is equal to minus 1 by 2 delta hi divided by delta t is equal to delta h2 divided by delta t which is equal to delta i2 divided by delta t for the reaction 5 br minus which is aqueous plus br o3 minus aqueous plus 6 h plus aqueous gives 3 br2 aqueous plus 3 h2 liquid rate for this reaction can be written as rate is equal to minus 1 by 5 delta br minus divided by delta t which is equal to minus delta br o3 minus divided by delta t equals to minus 1 by 6 delta h plus divided by delta t which is equal to 1 by 3 delta br2 divided by delta t which is equal to 1 by 3 delta h2 divided by delta t for a gaseous reaction at constant temperature concentration is directly proportional to the partial pressure of a gas hence the rate can be expressed as rate of change in partial pressure of the reactant or the product for example a gaseous reaction that is n2 gas reacts with 3h2 gas to give 2nh3 gas rate for this reaction can be written as rate is equal to minus delta p n2 divided by delta t which is equal to minus 1 by 3 delta p of h2 divided by delta t which is equal to plus 1 by 2 delta p of nh3 divided by delta t let us know the factors influencing the rate of a reaction rate of a reaction depends upon experimental conditions such as concentration of reactants pressure in case of gases temperature and catalyst dependence of rate on concentration the rate of a chemical reaction at a given temperature depends upon the concentration of one or more reactants and products the representation of rate of a reaction in terms of concentration of the reactants is known as rate law or rate equation or rate expression the rate of a reaction decreases with increase in time as the concentration of reactants decreases but a rates increase when reactant concentrations increase so the rate of a reaction depends upon the concentration of the reactants consider a general reaction a a plus b b gives c c plus d d where a b c d small are the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants and the products the rate expression for this reaction is rate is directly proportional to concentration of capital a to the power x into concentration of capital b to the power y or rate is equal to small k into concentration of a to the power x into concentration of b to the power y differential rate equation for this reaction can be written as d of r divided by dt is equal to k into a to the power x into b to the power y where k is a proportionality constant called rate constant the equation which relates the rate of a reaction to the concentration of reactants is called rate law or rate exp expression thus the rate law is the expression in which the reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of the reactants 
these turn rise to some power for example 2NO which is gas reacts with O2 which is gas gives 2NO2 which is a gas a rate for this reaction can be written as rate is equal to K into concentration of NO to the power 2 into concentration of O2 the differential form of this rate expression is given as dr by dt is equal to k into concentration of no to the power 2 into concentration of o2 for the reaction chcl3 which is chloroform reacts with chlorine to form carbon tetrachloride plus hcl rate for this re reaction can be written as rate is equal to k into chcl3 concentration of chcl3 into concentration of chlorine Cl2 to the power 1 by 2 for the reaction ethyl acetate that is CH3COO C2H5 plus H2O gives acetic acid CH3COOH plus C2H5OH the rate for this reaction can be written as rate is equal to K into concentration of ethyl acetate to the power 1 into concentration of H2O to the power 0 in these reactions, the exponents of the concentration terms are not the same as their stoichiometric coefficients. Thus, we can say that rate law for any reaction cannot be predicted by merely looking at the balanced chemical equation, that is, theoretically, but must be determined experimentally. Let us know the order of a reaction. Order of a reaction is the sum of the powers of the concentration of the reactants in the rate law expression. Order of a reaction can be 0, 1, 2, 3 and even a fraction. A zero order reaction means that the rate of reaction is independent of the concentration of the reactants for example rate is equal to k into concentration of a to the power 1 by 2 into concentration of b to the power 3 by 2 order for this rate law is equal to the powers can be added 1 by 2 plus 3 by 2 which is equal to 2 order is 2 for example or rate is equal to k into concentration of a to the power 3 by 2 into concentration of b to the power minus 1 order for this rate law is order is equal to 3 by 2 plus of minus 1 is equal to 1 by 2 let us know about types of chemical reactions there are mainly five types elementary reactions complex reactions conjugative reactions reverse reactions and side reactions The reactions taking place in one step are called elementary reactions. The reactions in which a sequence of elementary reactions gives us the products are called complex reactions. The reactions which involve a series of intermediate steps are called conjugative reactions. Example, oxidation of ethane to CO2 and H2 this reaction passes through in which alcohol aldehyde and acid are formed the reactions which in which interconversion of reactants and products is possible are called reverse reactions the reactions which involve the formation of more than one product are called side reactions example is nitration of phenol gives orthonitrophenol and paranitrophenol let us know about units of rate constants of different order of reactions for zero order reaction order is zero unit of rate constant is mole per liter per second for first order reaction order is one 
unit of rate constant is per second for second order reaction order is 2 unit of rate constant is the liter per mole per second let us know about molecularity of a reaction the molecularity of a reaction helps in understanding its mechanism the number of reacting species which may be atoms ions or molecules taking part in an elementary reaction which must collide simultaneously in order to bring about a chemical reaction is called molecularity of a reaction the reaction which involves one reacting species is called unimolecular reaction example is the decomposition of ammonium nitrate which gives nitrogen gas along with the formation of H2O. Bimolecular reactions involve simultaneous collision between two species. Example is the dissociation of hydrogen iodide that is 2HI gives H2 plus I2. Tri or ter molecular reactions involve simultaneous collision between three reacting species example is 2NO gives O2 2NO reacts with O2 to form 2NO2 polymolecular reactions are very rare and slow to proceed justify because the probability of collision and reaction between more than three molecules is very rare hence polymolecular that is more than three reactions are very rare and slow to proceed the complex reactions involving more than three molecules in the stoichiometric equation must take place in more than one step the overall rate of the reaction is controlled by the slowest step in a reaction which is called rate determining step that is RDS the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide in the presence of iodide ion as a catalyst in an alkaline medium which is given as 2H2O2 in the presence of I- and alkaline medium gives 2H2O plus O2 the rate equation for this reaction is rate is equal to minus D of concentration of H2O2 divided by DT which is equal to K into concentration of H2O2 into concentration of I minus. This reaction is first order with respect to both H2O2 and I minus. But this reaction takes place in two steps. In the first step H2O2 reacts with I minus to form H2O and IO minus. In the second step, it re H2O2 reacts with IO- to give H2O plus I- minus plus O2. Both the steps are bimolecular elementary reactions. The species IO- is called intermediate. Though it is formed during the reaction, but does not appear in the overall balanced equation. The first step being slow is the rate determining step. Thus, the rate of formation of intermediate will determine the rate of this reaction. Order of a reaction is an experimental quantity. Order can be zero and even a fraction, but molecularity can't be zero or a non-integer. Order is applicable to elementary as well as complex reactions whereas molecularity is applicable only for the elementary reactions. For a complex reaction molecularity has no meaning. For complex reaction order is given by the slowest step and molecularity of the slowest step is same as the order of the overall reaction. Let us know the differences between order and molecularity. Order is the sum of the powers of 
the concentration of the reactants in the rate law expression but the molecularity is the number of reacting species taking part in an elementary reaction which must collide simultaneously in order to bring about a chemical reaction order can be zero and even a fraction but molecularity cannot be zero or a non integer order is applicable to elementary and complex reactions but molecularity is applicable only for elementary reactions let us know how to derive rate constant for zero order reactions zero order reaction is the one in which rate of a reaction is proportional to zero power of the concentration of the reactants consider reaction where reactant gives product that is r gives p rate for this equation rate is equal to minus d of concentration of r divided by dt which is equal to k into concentration of r to the power 0 r to the power 0 is equal to 1 hence k into 1 which is equal to k rate means dr divided by dt so dr is equal to minus k into dt integrating both sides we get concentration of r is equal to minus kt plus i where i is integration constant concentration of initial initial concentration of reactant that is r not give is equal to minus k into 0 plus i because at time t is equal to 0 concentration of reactant becomes equal to initial concentration of the reactant that is r not hence r not is equal to i from equation 1 concentration of r is equal to minus kt plus concentration of r at initial at initial stage therefore rate constant that is k is equal to initial concentration of the reactant minus concentration of reactant divided by t that is time it is this is the expression for rate constant of zero order reaction examples of zero order reactions are the decomposition of gaseous ammonia on a hot platinum surface at high pressure second one is the thermal decomposition of hydrogen iodide on gold surface this is a graph for zero order reaction where we plot concentration of reactant versus time which gives a straight line having slope is equal to k ok let us know how to derive rate, con rate constant for uh, first order reactions first we need to remember what do you mean by first order reaction the rate of the reaction is proportional to the first power of the concentration of the reactant for example r gives p means rate for this equation uh, reaction is rate is equal to minus dr divided by dt is equal to k into r to the uh, concentration of r to the power 1 which is equal to k into r dr by r is equal to minus k dt integrating both sides we get ln of r is equal to minus kt plus i i is integration constant ln of r naught is equal to minus k into 0 plus i because at time t is equal to 0 r becomes r naught that is initial concentration of the reactant ln of r naught is equal to i from equation 1 ln of r is equal to minus kt plus ln of r naught because i is equal to r naught kt is equal to ln of r naught divided by r hence rate constant is that is k is equal to 1 by t ln of concentration of reactant at initial stage divided by concentration of the reactant or k is equal to 2.303 divided by t log of r naught divided by r 
This is the rate constant expression for first order reaction. Examples of first order reactions are hydrogenation of ethene that is C2H4 reacts with H2 to give C2H6. A rate for this reaction is rate is equal to K into concentration of C2H4 to the power 1. And second examples are all natural and artificial radioactive decay of unstable nuclei uh, follow first order reaction. Decomposition of N2O5 and N2O. These are the graphs where we plot in the first case lan of r versus time, which gives slope and intercept that is lan of r naught. In the second case, we plot log of r naught divided by r versus time, where we get straight line passing through horizon. Slope is equal to k divided by 2.303. These two graphs for first order reaction. Let us know about half life of a reaction that is T of. Half life of a reaction is the time in which the concentration of a reactant is reduced to one half of its initial concentration. For a zero order reaction, rate constant is k is equal to r r naught minus r divided by t at t is equal to t of r is equal to of r naught the rate constant at t no t of becomes k is equal to r naught minus 1 by 2 r naught minus divided by t of or t of is equal to r naught divided by 2k that is T of for a zero order reaction is directly proportional to the initial concentration of the reactants and inversely proportional to the rate constant. For first order reaction, K is equal to 2.303 divided by T log of R0 divided by R at T is equal to T of R is equal to R0 divided by 2. The equation 1 becomes K is equal to 2.303 divided by T of log of R0 divided by R divided by 2. T of is equal to 2.303 divided by K log of 2, which is equal to 2.303 divided by K log of 2 is equal to 0 0.301, which is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. That is, T of is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. For a first order reaction, half life period is constant. That is, it is independent of the initial concentration of the reacting species. For a zero order reaction, T of is directly proportional to initial concentration of the reactant. Let us know about pseudo first order reaction. Pseudo first order reaction is a reaction which is not first order reaction naturally but made first order by increasing or decreasing the concentration of one or the other reactant. Examples are hydrolysis of ethyl acetate and inversion of cane sugar. Temperature dependence of the rate of a reaction. Most of the chemical reactions are accelerated by increase in temperature due to increase in the number of activated molecules. For a chemical reaction with rise in temperature by 10 degree, the rate constant is nearly doubled. For example, in the decomposition of N2O5, the time taken for half of the original amount of material to decompose is 12 minute at 50 degree Celsius, 5 hour at 25 degree Celsius and 10 days at 0 degree Celsius. The temperature dependence of the rate of a chemical reaction can be accurately explained by Arrhenius equation that is small k is equal to capital A into e to the power minus Ea divided by Rt where capital A is the Arrhenius factor or frequency factor or pre-exponential factor which is a constant and specific to a particular reaction. 
capital R is a gas constant and Ea is activation energy which is measured in joules per mole. This is a diagram and also a graph where there will be formation of intermediate H2 reacts with I2 to form a intermediate and which finally decomposes to give two molecules of HI. In the graph we can plot potential energy versus reaction intermediate. H2 reacts with I2 to form activated complex that is C which undergoes decomposition to form B that is product is 2HI. According to Arrhenius, this reaction occurs only when a molecule of hydrogen and a molecule of iodine collide to form an unstable intermediate. This intermediate exists for a very short time and which then breaks up to form two molecules of hydrogen iodide. The energy required to form this intermediate or activated complex is known as activation energy or energy of activation. This is a graph where we plot a ln of k versus 1 by t. Here k is rate constant, capital T is the temperature which gives intercept which is equal to ln of a and slope which is equal to minus e a divided by r. The plot of ln of k versus 1 by t gives a straight line that is ln of k is equal to minus Ea divided by Rt plus ln of A. Log of k2 divided by k1 is equal to Ea into t2 minus t1 divided by 2.303 or into t1 into t2. Effect of a catalyst First we need to know what do you mean by catalyst. A catalyst is a substance which increases the rate of a reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. For example, in the decomposition of potassium chloride that is KClO3, manganese dioxide is acting as a catalyst to give two molecules of KCl and three molecules of oxygen molecules. The substance added to the reaction that reduces the rate of a reaction is called inhibitor. Intermediate complex formation theory explains the action of a catalyst in a reaction. According to this theory, it takes place in two steps. First step is formation of an intermediate complex due to the chemical reaction between catalyst and reactants. Second step is the de decomposition of an intermediate complex which is very short living to give products and the catalyst. This is a graph which shows effect of a catalyst on activation energy. If you conduct a chemical reaction without adding a catalyst, it takes more energy and also more time. But if you add a catalyst to the reaction mixture, the reactant gets converted into product in a short time and it requires less amount of activation energy. The catalyst provides an alternate path by reducing the activation energy between the reactants and the products. Hence, it lowers the potential energy barrier between reactant and product. As per Arrhenius equation, the lower the value of activation energy, faster will be the rate of a reaction. A small amount of the catalyst can catalyze a large amount of reactants. A catalyst does not alter Gibbs energy of a reaction. It catalyzes the spontaneous reactions but not the non-spontaneous reactions. 
the catalyst does not change the equilibrium constant of a reaction but it helps in attaining the equilibrium faster that is it catalyzes the forward as well as the backward reactions to the same extent so that the equilibrium state remains the same but is reached earlier let us know about collision theory of chemical reactions collision theory was developed by max trotz and william lewis collision theory deals with the energetic and mechanistic aspects of reactions this theory is based on kinetic theory of gases according to this theory the reactant molecules are assumed to be hot spheres and the reaction occurs when molecules collide with each other the number of collisions per second per unit volume of the reaction mixture is known as collision frequency denoted by capital z the factor which affects the rate of a chemical reaction is activation energy for a bimolecular elementary reaction that is a plus b gives products the rate of reaction can be expressed as rate is equal to zab into e of minus ea divided by rt where zab is the collision frequency of reactants a and b e to the power minus ea divided by rt is the fraction of the molecules with energies equal to or greater than ea all the collisions do not lead to the formation of products the molecules with the sufficient kinetic energy which is called threshold energy and proper orientation undergo collisions which facilitate the breaking of old bonds between reacting species and the formation of new bonds to form the products these collisions are called effective collisions to account for effective collisions another factor that is p capital p called probability or steric factor is introduced for a collision to occur molecules must be properly oriented that is rate is equal to capital p into capital z of ab into e to the power minus ea divided by rt thus in collision theory activation energy and proper orientation of the molecules together determine the effective collision and hence the rate of a chemical reaction for example formation of methanol from bromoethane depends upon the orientation of the molecules the proper orientation of reactant molecules lead to bond formation of products whereas improper orientation does not give the products this you can see in that diagram improper orientation does not give product but proper orientation forms intermediate first and finally gives the products drawback of collision theory is this theory considers atoms or molecules to be hot spheres and also this theory ignores their structural aspect thank you